Hello there. Uh, in this video lesson, we're going to uh, show you how to set up the user interface in Blender 2.9 from the point of view of jewellery design and 3D printing. I'm going to show you how you can install some add-ons required for this course, including Jewelcraft and the Fluid Designer assets and some other ones as well. Now, what we recommend that you actually do is if you go onto the internet and if you go to our website at fluiddesigner.co.uk, and if you click to go to the download page, and if you just scroll down slightly, you'll see that there is a list there of free software that you can download. And essentially, you need to work down this list uh, and install the various software and add-ons and assets uh, to get ready for this course. So the first thing that you need to do is to download, download and install Blender 2.9. So if you click on that link, it will take you to the eBlender.org download page. Now, Blender runs under Windows, the Mac operating system, and Linux. So you need to download and install the appropriate version of the software and get it up and running on your system. And that will obviously take you some time. So I suggest you just pause this video and do that. Uh, and then when you come back, make sure you've got Blender itself up and running. So, uh, once you've done all that, uh, like I say, make sure that you've got Blender installed on your system and uh, you're at the opening screen. And Blender should start up looking something like this and uh, essentially in the middle of the screen here you've got the, the workspace. Now by default on the workspace there should be three objects. There's a cube, there should be a light source and there should be a camera. And over here on the right hand side, the three objects are listed in what's called the outliner panel. So this little window here this, uh, gives a list of whatever objects are on your screen. So if we select the camera first of all, now from the point of view of 3D printing, we don't need a camera, we don't need a light source. And because we're going to work with curves rather than meshes, we don't need the cube either. So the first thing we want to learn is how to delete these objects. Well, if you look down in the left-hand corner of the screen here, there's a little mouse. And whenever I select an object, whenever I click the mouse, uh, or whenever I press a key on the keyboard, it should be displayed in the left-hand corner of the screen here throughout this course. So I want to teach you how to delete these objects. So with the camera highlighted, if I press the X key on the keyboard, notice the X appears. But I also need to click here where it says delete the object. So the camera will disappear from the workspace and it will also disappear from this list here. Now I also want to delete the light source which is this little object here. Now it is important that you don't have the mouse over here somewhere when you press X on the keyboard. The mouse does need to be on the workspace. So if you press the X key on the keyboard and delete, that will delete the light source. Now if I click on the cube, now before I delete this cube, what I want to show you is the size of this. And uh, if I just go to view, and here it says sidebar, and notice there's a little N, a little N next to it. Now I tend to press N on the keyboard to open up the sidebar, rather than go to view and sidebar, but I'll do view and sidebar there. So that opens up this little sidebar panel here, and if I click on item with the cube selected, Notice the dimensions of the cube. It's two millimeters in the X direction, two millimeters in the Y, sorry, not millimeters, two meters in the X, two meters in the Y, and two meters in the Z. And if I just go over here and click on move, red is actually the X direction, green is the Y direction, and blue is the Z direction. And you can see that just up here as well. So. It's two meters by two meters by two meters. Now, that's far too big from the point of view of 3D printing. So we need to delete this object and change our system so that it displays a cube that's two millimeters by two millimeters by two millimeters. So to delete this particular cube, we need to hit the X key on the keyboard and click to delete it. Now, how do we uh, change this to millimeters? Well, first of all, if we go over to this panel over here, this is called the properties panel. And what we need to do is to select this one here that says scene properties. And we need to click here just to the left of units. Now it should by default set it up as metric, but notice the length is in meters. So we need to change meters to millimeters. 
Now we also need to change the unit scale from one. Now when I do this, notice there's a grid on the screen at the moment, but when I click in here and hit the backspace key and type 0 0.001, 0 0.001 means a thousandth, in other words, millimeters. When I press the enter key, I've got my unit scale now as 0 0.001, but notice my grid has disappeared, so I need to put the grid back in and we can do that by clicking up here to the overlays and we need to change this scale as well. If you click in it and type 0 0.001, I hit the backspace key to delete it. And when you press the enter key, notice the grid comes back there. Okay. Um, now, if I add an object now, so if I go to add and a mesh, now this course, we're really interested in using curves for jewellery design rather than meshes okay but uh, curves and meshes and we'll talk about them more later but if I go to add mesh and if I add a cube this time notice it looks like it's the same size as before and over here in the outlier panel it says cube but notice here it says two millimeters this time two millimeters and two millimeters so although it looks like the same cube as before it's not it's a thousandth time smaller now another thing important to understand is when you go to add mesh or add curve there's a little thing opens up down here which is closed down a little panel and if I click on that that's quite an important little panel to observe when you add new objects and notice it says two millimeters as the size there. Now we could change it to something like three millimeters and notice it will change the x, y and the z dimensions to three millimeters if we do that. So just be aware of this little uh, panel, this little window that's down here. Never opens up when you add a new object, but it does appear. Now we don't want this cube on the uh, screen at the moment. So what we can do is we can, with it highlighted, and with the mouse in the middle of the screen, if you hit the X key on the keyboard and delete, you'll be able to delete it. Now this little panel over here uh, is the sidebar. And uh, if I just click sidebar there, that'll get rid of that. I don't want that on my screen. Now, at the moment, I'm looking at uh, our objects from an angle here. Now, from the point of view of uh, this course, I want to change my view to the top view. So what you need to do is to go to view and viewpoint and top, top view. Now, when you do that, notice that the grid these are all, all these little boxes. They're all one millimeter by one millimeter boxes. And uh, if you look over here, we've got, we should have X on the right hand side, Y at the top and Z in the middle. So this is the X axis, which is the red line. Y is the green line. Now the blue actually comes out into the screen towards you. So you don't actually see that. Now, one other thing is on your system, this little uh, icon here might be switched on the snap. Uh, I'm going to suggest at the moment you switch that off. So we're going to switch the snap off so it shouldn't be lit here. Now, what we want to do now is to save our settings that we've just changed here, the unit scale, etc., in millimeters, so that every time we open up Blender, we won't have uh, the light source and the camera, etc. on, and we'll have the top view. And notice it says top here, top orthographic. And the way to save the settings is to go to File and Defaults and to save the startup file. And you do need to click again a second time. So that's, uh, that's basically how we need to set up part of uh, Blender here for 3D printing. But there's a lot of other things that we need to do as well. Um, so if you go back to the internet and go back to the uh, Fluid Designer download page, um, so we've uh, downloaded and installed Blender and uh, changed some of the setup there. Now the next thing we need to do is to download and install the DualCraft add-on. Now when you click on that link there, it should take you to the DualCraft on GitHub page. And essentially what you need to do is to click on code and download the zip file. So download the zip file to your machine. Now, if you scroll down the page, notice there are some videos that you can watch there on GitHub, and there are some instructions on how to install it, but we're going to do that for you anyway. So if I just close GitHub down and uh, go back to uh, Blender, 